Right, let's have a bit of a tidy up and then I'm going to get the Muppet out and see if these MOSFET drivers work. So I've got the Muppet 2 board out. I've put the um, Arduino there and the two little driver boards, which I did in red to match the Arduino board. Looks rather good, doesn't it? And now I want to power that Arduino up. I've got my 5 volts connected to my PC there. And then that should actually, once it's settled down, I should be able to turn this tensiometer down here and watch first this driver come on, go to green. And then when that goes fully to green, this one then comes on for the remainder of the travel of this. So it does the buck driver first, which will be this MOSFET. And then it does the boost driver, which will be this MOSFET. So let's get the outputs of these two hooked up to these two MOSFETs and we should be able to do a boost from 12 volts, which I'll have on here, up to the 24 volts of my super cap. So I can't quite remember how this works. Um, is it these top two? I think it might be those top two. If you use the bottom two, it just inverts. So let's plug that onto the MOSFET. Now I need ground, which is yellow, onto source of the MOSFET. Oh, I think it's that way around actually. Shouldn't blow the MOSFET up if you get this wrong. And the way I'm going to check this is just put this bulb on the output. So we should have something going through that because I haven't got any input juice yet. Yeah, I found one of these quite high current um, 2.1 millimeter female DC jacks to bare ends. So if I put a couple of ring terminals or spade terminals on that, I can just plug my 12 volts from my solar system in there and just see whether this lamp, which is on the right hand side of my unit, is brightness controllable with this pot uh, just on that first driver. Let's try that. Right, I've got 12 volts coming in from my solar power system, actually 13 and a half. And this is now working. I can turn on the lamp there when the, uh, the first MOSFET driver, the buck MOSFET driver starts conducting. And I've got a bit of current on my ammeter there. So now what I want to do is implement the boost, which is further up the travel of this pot when this thing starts to come on. This only goes to 50% because you don't want to turn this, this MOSFET, which is running uh, directly between your voltage rail and ground. Don't want to turn that one for permanently on, otherwise create a, a short there. So should be able to, by connecting up the second MOSFET, be able to get that bulb to go brighter than that. Let's try it. So that's the second MOSFET uh, connected in to the second driver. And yeah, this seems to work. I can turn the uh, first MOSFET driver on full just before the second one comes on and I've got some current going into the bulb. So the bulb's getting its 12 volts. And then as I extend this beyond, the bulb gets quite a lot brighter and the ammeter starts to really shoot up as I'm boosting as the second unit gets towards its 50% mark. So yeah, that's working as uh, buck and then boost. Now to put the supercapacitor on the output and charge it. And uh, I think this could come in handy. It's some banana plugs to crock clips. I was going through Lucky Warm's listings. Like I do sometimes, I'll just go through one seller's listings and just see what they've got and end up ordering a few bits and pieces. This looked useful and this is going to be perfect to plug into the output of this thing and connect up to the supercapacitor to charge it. So here's the supercapacitor module. Um, now I've done this, I've charged this before, but I charged it um, just with a buck converter, no, a boost converter from my 12 volts and then a buck converter, which was current controlled. This of course is manually controlled, so I've got to kind of steer it with this pot. Um, I've got my little lamp array here, which I can put in there. So let's put that down there, connect it up to the output of this thing and start charging. Watching paint dry. It's my favourite. Yeah, these crop clips fit on there quite nicely. Now I've got a, a diode here, which is part of the boost circuit. So this can't back feed anyway. So let's plug that into pos output, plug that into neg output and raise this up um, 
into the buck region because of course this thing is low voltage at the moment and what I'm really doing is just looking for a sort of modest current so let's just go for two amps and of course that's going to keep falling back so I've got to keep steering this up and just waiting for those lamps to come up oh, I can see one of them just glowing faintly so the voltage on there is rising up I don't quite know what it is but the lamps give me an in a sort of indication of where I am and uh, yeah I want to take that all the way to 24 volts from a 12 volt input and of course I'm using the boost mechanism of Muppet 2 I'll just tip that if I can without destroying everything you can see the inductor there the big inductor and the two MOSFETs on the buck and boost sections uh, right that's dropped way back so let's get that back up to 2 amps and I'll just it just keeps falling back because of course the voltage on the supercap keeps coming up so I've got to keep nudging this pot up and what I'm really watching here is the current that's all I'm watching uh, I'll know when I'm at 12 volts actually because the second driver module will start to come on at 12 volts Oop, that's three amps uh, so the red LED is getting quite dim on the buck module so that must mean we're approaching 12 volts that got, got up to 12 volts very quickly uh, those lamps are dim aren't they but then they're in series so that's 24 volts Ah, right, I'm not really getting anything. Oh, yeah, as I start to drive the second module, I can drive the current up to two amps again. Keep on pushing that up to a nice good current. That will fall away. Of course, it's much um, finer control here because I'm only using a third of the pot range for the boost phase. But those lamps are getting bright I'm just now waiting really for the LEDs on the protection circuits on that supercapacitor to start coming on let's give it a couple of amps and then of course as soon as those lamps come on that thing's only really capable of dissipating about half an amp I think from each cap so the first one that comes on I'll need to back this off to about half an amp so I don't burn that out let's pull this forward slightly actually and pull this forward slightly so we can see that better uh, let's keep it up about two amps until I start seeing LEDs on this module start to come on that's what I'm waiting for oh I love this this is a great way to waste time now are these hot these MOSFETs oh that one's warm just warm that's nice what about this one? Oh, that's exceedingly hot very hot I wonder why that one gets so hot is it the back EMF from the inductor I did buy some um, little heat sinks for these TO220 sized heat sinks so I must see if I can find those they'll be in my bin of um, incoming mail somewhere uh, yeah I'll get a heat sink certainly on that one probably put one on that one as well doesn't make sense to just put it on one yeah, not seeing any of these red LEDs yet well, I've just dimmed the lights a bit um, I suppose it would make sense to put a voltmeter on this super cap well I've got this 20 volt uh, mechanical voltmeter oh that's over 20 volts isn't it yeah so that's probably around 22 volts okay so we don't need to push much further to start getting protection circuits coming on I wouldn't have thought let's raise that back up to an amp aha here they come I got four five six and of course the slightest tweak on the pot I can sort of control those and again there was one cat wasn't there that was well under all the others so yeah so I can light all those up if I give it about an amp and they're directly offsetting that current of course because those caps have come up to voltage so really I just want to put a trickle current in there for about half an amp and then just wait until this lazy cap as I was calling it last time I did this uh, until that one gets up to voltage might put a voltmeter on that cap actually yes I remember what I wanted to do now I wanted to sort of soak charge uh, the capacitor that's low and I think what I'm going to do is solder a couple of wires on directly onto the capacitor points there and then just charge this capacitor on its own with a buck converter not with Muppet 2 because current control on this is a little bit twitchy 
I don't have to move the pot much and I'm sort of going between half amp to one amp and I probably would want to soak. Um, the problem with this is that um, these resistors were very close to the capacitor connections if you remember and as these resistors get warm and they're sitting there just burning energy up at the moment getting warm it's warming the capacitors up and I didn't want to leave it for any length of time doing that so I think the only way to bring this lazy capacitor up is to solder some connections directly to it. It's got its own protection circuit anyway, and just use the little uh, butt converter I've got to just lift this one up and try and balance it with all the others. That I think is the best way to do this, not using Muppet 2. So another tidy up and let's get that wired up. Let's get a couple of diode clipping off cut things. I just kept all the uh, diode offcuts from those big fat diodes because they make very good nice big fat connections and I'm going to solder them onto the lazy capacitor. So this is, oh, I'll just turn that around, this is where the helping hands are fairly essential. I've got to remember actually these caps are all charged up aren't they so I'm going to stick my bulbs on there and gradually uh, discharge that all back down again. be a lot safer if I do that. So let's put one of these diode clip offcut things. Let's turn this around and put it in the crock clip and then bring that down roughly into position and solder it. So this is the setup to uh, charge this rogue capacitor. I've soldered a couple of thick wires onto it. Uh, I don't quite know why I've got this huge discrepancy between the voltmeter on this because I've got no anti-backfeed diode here. So it should be measuring the voltage at the capacitor. Maybe it's current drop and maybe one of these leads is terrible. But uh, yeah, measuring two volts on the output of the power supply, 1.5 actually at the capacitor. Of course, the 1.5 I'm measuring is with no current flow through the leads. This is with half an amp of current flow. So maybe that answers it, but it is a big discrepancy. So this is probably more accurate, 1.5. So I'm putting in half an amp, I can switch to that. Uh, I could probably raise that actually while I watch this voltage go up. I might put it up to one amp and just bring this single individual capacitor up to its 2.7 volts, assuming it gets there without uh, doing something nasty. And uh, that hopefully will balance it with the other eight. So now at about an amp, that's current. And yes, this is coming up. Now when I was charging the whole pack, this got up to about 2 volts and then just sat there. So there might be a bit of resistance at 2 volts. Uh, I don't know. When I say resistance, I mean a hesitance to go any further, but uh, we shall see. So 2.1 volts I'm measuring across the cap. This thing thinks it's got to 2.7 volts. Let's put the voltage limit on the, uh, what's it called, constant voltage thing. Current wise, of course, it's fallen away a bit now, it's doing half an amp, but this has gone beyond two volts, so I'll just leave that for a while. I was just trying to remember how many amps these circuits can dissipate. It's 2.7 volts, 6.8 ohms, so I equals V over R. It's less than 500 milliamps, isn't it? Anyway, that's on 500 milliamps. This is just about to hit 2.7 volts. So I could bring that down a bit. But anyway, that capacitor has come up to voltage. Its little red light is on. So maybe I'll just bring that down to 400 milliamps or something. And then just let it soak for a while. Uh, that's still creeping up, which is probably a good thing. These circuits don't switch on and off like the ones with the voltage detector I've seen. So these seem to be sort of linear uh, protection circuits that probably protect more and more the higher the voltage goes. I don't know that and I haven't done a schematic of that circuit but yeah that's the rogue capacitor brought up to voltage. I'll let it sit there for a while and then at some other time, probably not now, see whether this capacitor bank has kind of balanced itself but for the moment that's it. Cheerio.